what exactly does this scientist claim to have done? I mean, you described it pretty well. He, he says that he has modified the two, two of the embryos that were then uh, delivered into two young baby girls, as two young baby girls who, um, according to him, have a certain resistance to HIV. It's essentially modifying the genes of a human being um, and doing it from birth and making sure that it permeates all of the DNA um, in their body. It's an exceptionally bold claim. It's the type of thing that people have thought might be possible at some point, but a lot of the field has, says, has said, you know, we weren't ready to quite make this leap um, just yet. It's set off an unbelievable controversy in the scientific community. Now, Jiwoo, you've developed a technique uh, using CRISPR to kill cancer cells, basically, and you've also continued this research at Stanford. You've been involved in the ethical debate around it as well. What's your reaction to this scientist claim? Um, yeah, I was pretty shocked when I first read the article, and I definitely think that it's a little bit premature, um, especially considering the fact that like previous guidelines have said not to do any gene editing in embryos. Um, I think it's a step forward. I don't know if it's a step forward that we should have taken this early on, but it's going to be interesting to see where um, scientists and ethicists decide to go on next. Now, there's an unofficial international moratorium on, on using this technology on humans, even the, the co-inventor of CRISPR uh, said on Bloomberg earlier that, that she's disgusted by this. Jiwoo, what do we know about the actual risks? This scientist says these babies have been born healthy. Are there risks that we don't know? Yeah, uh, we, we don't yet know the exact changes that CRISPR is going to make on the other parts of the genome. Because if you make one change in the genome, you don't know how it's going to affect any other phenotypes. For example, the particular gene that the scientists decided to change to make the babies resistant to HIV, we don't know how that gene is going to influence any other um, diseases. Some people think that that gene also can influence your risk for uh, West Nile virus and make you actually more susceptible to other diseases. So whether, now, um, Drew, yeah, so whether, uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Jiwoo. Okay, so uh, like whether it's going to affect like any other like disease susceptibility, we still, still don't know yet. Jiwoo, the Chinese National Health Commission uh, is investigating and, and Drew, uh, tell us a little bit more about the Chinese government's reaction here because officials are not happy. No, they're not. And I think we're still seeing that reaction play out. Um, right now, we've seen the Chinese health, some of the Chinese health officials say that they've put a stop to his research. Um, he, was, he pulled out of a conference where he was supposed to speak in Hong Kong. And the, there have been officials out there saying that what he did appears to have been illegal, potentially. Um, and there also appears to be some issues where his university, where he was working at in Shenzhen, said that there may have been some signatures forged on permission documents for the university's ethical community committee. Um, so I, I think we are going to see this continue to play out in terms of a of a consequences standpoint. Um, China has a booming biotechnology industry. It is very interested in being at the forefront of some of these technologies, like gene editing, um, like new therapies in cancer and a lot of very exciting stuff. I think it also wants to show that it is an entirely legitimate industry in the world. You know, parts of China, uh, biomedical research in the past have been seen a little bit as a wild, wild west. And this is, a, is, a, is an opportunity for the government there to decide and make very clear to the world how it stands about certain research ethics, what's permissible and what's not. And I, I have a feeling that this researcher is going to, to, to mark a very pivotal point in the history of how the Chinese regulators and government approach the industry. There are three different public companies working on CRISPR right now. There are folks like you, Jiwoo, who are, are continuing uh, to do research on uh, the future of this technology. What could be possible uh, with CRISPR in the future with regard to human life? And what are the technological hurdles needed uh, to be overcome to get there? Um, I definitely think that the future of CRISPR lies with human therapeutics. Um, there are already a lot of clinical trials going on uh, to use CRISPR uh, for like cancer therapies or other like blood disorders. Um, what are the main drawbacks or hurdles that we have to overcome before we can actually use CRISPR in humans is the delivery. Um, delivery of CRISPR into humans is still um, something we need to research further in order to like uh, actually use it as a therapeutic.